Today I want to share with you the three best garden seeds to buy now to stock in your prepper pantry. Plus, I've got a discount coupon code for you. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now the first thing I want to say is this is not a sponsored video. I just think really well of this company that I'm going to share with you today. And second, you might be wondering why I'm talking about garden seeds and gardening in November, is because these seeds will last anywhere from three years to eight years. Survival Garden Seeds is an American-owned small family business, and I love supporting businesses like this. And my sweet friend Carly over at Survival Garden Seeds was so generous to send me these three collections and to offer you a 10% discount on any of these three collections. So what I want to share with you today is what is in each collection and also what I'm going to be planting because I live in Central Texas so we're very fortunate that we can pretty much garden all year long here but even if you're in a cooler climate and you can do a fall crop or maybe you've got some cold frames I think there'll be a little something here for everybody. And the nice thing about their seeds is they're non-hybrid, non-GMO, chemical-free, heirloom, and open pollinators. And if the term open pollinator or open pollinated seeds is new to you, what that means is basically two things. Number one, they're pollinated, the plants are pollinated uh, by bees and insects and wind and rain, you know, just the natural process of pollination. But more importantly, is that when you save the seeds from the plant that you grow from these seeds, and then you go and plant them your following growing season, when you're using an open pollinator seed, you're going to get the same plant. So if you grew a particular plant and you said, wow, I really like that tomato, and you save those seeds, and then you went and planted them the next season, you should get that same tomato. Now before we open each of these collections, and I'll go over the prices with you as well, I just want to mention that regardless of where you buy your seeds, you really want to visit their website, the Survival Garden Seeds website, because they have so much information over there. And they also have a blog that corresponds with their website. And they have a growing guide that it's about 18 pages long. I printed mine out. You could probably download it too if you didn't want to print it out. But I'm going to three hole punch it and put it in my garden uh, journal. I was so impressed with this. This is such a terrific guide and it goes over a lot of detail about how to find the right place uh, to plant, all about uh, your soil and enriching your soil. Uh, how to uh, water different types of containers. It's just really wonderful. And there, I, I really liked that they had information here, starting seeds indoors. A lot of times I'll just uh, sow directly into my raised beds because the climate's pretty mild here, but they have a whole uh, section in, in this uh, printout or handout, whatever you would call it, about starting seeds indoors. So it's really great, especially if you're new uh, to gardening. And it talks about weed control and controlling pests, controlling disease, crop rotation, which is very important. You don't always want to plant things in the same place. And then it talks about harvesting your crops, storing your har harvest, uh, different ways to preserve them. They talk about canning and drying and fermenting and pickling. So I highly recommend that you at least head over to their site and uh, uh, download this growing guide. I thought it was terrific. Now the collections that I want to share with you, which are eligible for the discount, are the Home Garden Collection. This has 30 packages of seeds in it. And then you've got the Homesteader Collection, which has 50 packages of seeds. And then you've got the big daddy here. This is the Farmer's Seed Vault, and it has 100 packages of seeds. So that's really nice. Uh, well, they're all nice, but uh, this home garden collection is $29.99. So it's basically a dollar a packet 
uh, for seeds and such high quality seeds. So it's a good deal. And then this, and they basically all work out to be a dollar a package. Uh, the, the Homesteader collection that has 50, this is $49.99. And as I said, you're getting 50. And then this one with 100 is $99.99. <laughs> but so for about a dollar a package, you can't go wrong. And then the discount is 10% off. Now I wanna mention that most all of their seeds are American varieties and American grown. Uh, occasionally, I know on their website, they mention that if they can't get a seed that is an American seed and they import it, they make sure, and it's very rare when this happens, they make sure that it's uh, suitable to growing in the continental United States. Now, given the price of groceries lately, and we don't know what the future holds, we should all seriously be thinking about what I've shared with you in the past, multiple streams of food. Not only do we buy things at the grocery store, we also want to be thinking about what can we produce on whatever property we have. Even when it comes to gardening, even if it's just a windowsill garden, start and learn. Even if it's a little patio or a little balcony, start and learn. Because the more you expose yourself to trying to grow things, the more you grow your knowledge base as well. And then if you're ever in a situation where maybe you're just gonna be relying on what you're growing, you will already have the knowledge and know what's successful, what's not successful, and so on and so forth. Like I know in my garden, I have a kitchen garden, and I don't have a huge garden. I've got, uh, I think I've got four raised beds. I have to think about it for a minute. Four raised beds and some trellises and things like that. And over the years, I've really learned what, do, what does well where, what things I can grow well here in Central Texas, what things that don't do so well, you know? And so this is all knowledge that can be helpful to me now and in the future. And what they say on the back, I think it's pretty much the same on the back of each package. It says this collection, in this case it's 30 varieties, this collection contains 30 varieties to grow a bountiful harvest this season, or if needed, in a survival situation. We all hope that never happens, but it's also good to always be prepared. If stored properly, seeds will remain viable for three to eight years. And then she goes on to write that this reusable package, this package, I'm gonna open it very neatly, <laughs> can be saved to store, store seeds from future harvests. And then she talks about just follow the seed saving directions on the packets. It's very nice the way it's just packaged like this. I really like it, especially for storing. Uh, in if you have a section of your prepper pantry, which you use to restock your main working pantry, what you access every day, it's always good to have a section uh, of your prepper pantry that you set apart for something that you can call your emergency pantry or your survival pantry. And something like this can really be a good addition. And they talk about on the back for storage instructions for long-term storage, moisture and temperature are the important factors. Keep bags zipped closed to keep moisture out and store in a cool, dry location. And I think we're all very familiar with that, especially those of us who home can. You know, you always want like a cool, dry location. Well, let's go ahead and open these. Now, something that this one I just think is terrific for most of us, this home garden collection because I think this is going to have an excellent uh, variety uh, for pretty much any home garden. And on their website, they do go into detail. They, they show pictures of everything, so you know exactly what you're getting. I love the inside of this bag. It's, you know, it's kind of like foil lined, so that's definitely gonna give good protection to our seeds. Well, they've got four little bunches of seeds here that they've just kind of wrapped together to keep everything nice and neat in, in the package. So we got these little rubber bands here. I'm just gonna get them off and then we'll go through and see everything that's in this home garden collection. So it looks like they've got spinach, winter squash, Swiss chard. Oh, these are all things that do well here. And then this is interesting. And Heirloom Rainbow Mix for tomatoes. Now, I have never grown heirloom tomatoes, 
So this is very intriguing. And we can actually, it's very hard here in the summer to grow tomatoes. I know that seems funny to maybe many of you, depending where you live. But it just gets so darn hot here that often, you know, kind of around early June, you're sort of wrapping up <laughs> the tomatoes. Uh, and normally what I grow are the romas and the cherry tomatoes. Uh, so I'm glad they have romas in the collection. And they do well. And then, you know, kind of wrapping up the end of May or so, beginning of June. And then we can grow them again in the fall, which is fun. Uh, oh, these are snowball turnips. Oh, I think these are going to be great. And then they've got watermelon and a zucchini. That's always nice. I like growing different types of zucchini. Uh, last year I grew the patty pan squash. I love that. I hadn't done that in a while. Uh, they look like little uh, flying saucers, if you're familiar with them. And my son and I used to grow them when he was little. Uh, but I had, they did great, and I had a wonderful, wonderful crop of those last year. And they've got some chamomile. And something that I want to mention about this is that whenever you're doing a vegetable garden, especially if you're new to gardening, it's always good to grow some herbs. First of all, they not only have culinary purposes, they also have medicinal purposes. So it's good to have a little bit of a, uh, get a little bit of an herb garden going for various reasons. And also butterflies, bees, insects, you know, different uh, flowers, different herbs, different, you know, vegetables, the flowers, uh, when the vegetable is just beginning to grow and whatnot, uh, provide a nice variety for them and different things that they may like. So that's always, I always feel it's good to have a nice little selection, uh, a varied selection of things that you grow, including the herbs and flowers. And you can do edible flowers, you know, nasturtiums, you know, they're a little spicy. Uh, they're very nice to grow. And they've got radishes in here. And, uh, oh, this is cute. The small sugar pumpkins and jalapeno. Oh my gosh, these grow great. I am in Texas. <laughs> these grow great here. Uh, and pepper, these are, uh, they look like sweet red bell peppers. California Wonder. That'll be interesting to try. And they've got some eggplant, some melon. I've never tried melon before. And then okra. Oh, my husband and son love okra. And boy, this is an extensive collection. They've got arugula. I love arugula. And that's good to grow this time of year. Uh, all your lettuces, all your greens, all of those are good to grow in the cooler months, uh, especially here in Central Texas. And maybe depending on what zone some of you are in, uh, you can grow some of these uh, winter crops or fall or fall and winter crops where you are. Uh, or maybe if you have a real cold climate, uh, you've got uh, a cold frame and you can do some greens, which, which is always nice. Basil, I'll definitely do this next year. And uh, broccoli, oh, wonderful. And carrots, oh, these look good. Oh, and these are, they have two types of carrots. They have the la larger ones and then they have the little fingers. I like growing the little carrots. They do very well here. Oh, and they've got pickling cucumbers. This I really like because I love making all kinds of pickles, both fermenting them and home canning them. And sometimes it can be difficult at the grocery store to find pickling cucumbers. So growing them is always a smart option. And then how perfect they include dill. These kind of go hand in hand uh, when you're fermenting or pickling uh, or home canning. So that's terrific. And I don't know if, if it's the case where you live, but here, dill, the caterpillars love it. And so I always like to grow, and it sounds like there's a lot of seeds in here. I like to grow a lot of dill so that there's plenty for them too. And something I wanna mention while we're going over these three different seed collections is that on the back of each package, the information is very unique to the particular seeds and to what you're growing. They have uh, information, the instructions on how to grow these uh, properly, and then they have all the information that you need on how to save the seeds. So this is terrific. And what I would recommend is when you grow these, and what I'll do is I wanna mention uh, that the ones that I can grow now this time of year, I'm gonna get these started and then I'm gonna do a follow-up video 
and show you how everything is sprouting and growing because they say on their packaging, guaranteed to grow. So I'm very excited about that. So I will get these going and then I'll do a follow-up video uh, to share with you how everything's doing. And then once we grow some things, I'll do another video. Maybe we'll do some home canning or, or some fermenting uh, with, with what we grow. Uh, but what I would recommend is I would open these seed packages very carefully and then I would just use them as, as they recommend to save your seeds once you've dried them and you know done followed the appropriate instructions on the back and then put them in here put them away and then you've got them for next year or next season you know depending on on how much you can you know how many growing seasons you have uh, so that's something to keep in mind and this well i think this would make a great you know as we get closer to christmas this would make a great christmas gift if you have a gardener in the family or if you're a gardener yourself and put it on your wish list <laughs> so this is a really excellent collection they've covered a lot of things here so if you're new to gardening or you like me, you just kind of have a smaller garden, uh, the, I think this home garden collection is fantastic. Now, again, I just want to mention over on their website, they show in great detail exactly what's in each one of these collections. So you can definitely head over there and check that out as well. Now, this is an amazing collection. And I, you know, as I said, they have all of these on their website. So I won't go through all 50. But what's very interesting is everything in here in the homesteader collection is different that's, than what's in the home garden collection. So if you were to buy both, you would be getting different things in each of them. There are no repeats. However, there are similarities. Uh, they do like, for example, they do have cabbage, but here they're using the early round Dutch variety. And they've got some peppers, but they're doing cayenne. These also do really great here in Texas. And so they've got some different, you know, different varieties, which is nice because then you can kind of see what varieties do best for you, what you like best, what does best in your area. This is really interesting. They have popcorn. So corn that you would grow that would be for making popcorn. And once you grow and harvest these kernels, this is a forever food, this type of corn. It lasts basically forever, you know, when stored appropriately. But something that I just thought was so unique in this collection is they have gourds that you can grow. And they're the type of gourds that you can make like the little dippers uh, from. Maybe you've seen these. I just think that's hysterical. I have never tried growing these, but I'm going to now. This is going to be fun. So this is really a very thorough collection of seeds and something that I think is excellent. I mean, given the price and you're running about a dollar a pack and you know, they're non-GMO, they're heirloom, they're open pollinators, which that heirloom and open pollinator go hand in hand. This, you can't beat this. This is fantastic. So the third collection is the Farmer's Seed Vault and it's pretty easy to open. You just have to pull this piece off and then I think this is probably just going to open one way or the other. You can even, yeah, this way. Look at that. That is so nice. Wow, this is really an amazing collection of seeds. And similar to how the uh, homesteader and the home garden collection were different, it seems to be very much the same sort of theme that you have similar uh, vegetables that they're putting in here, but slightly different varieties. And I like that. And this collection definitely has more herbs in it. This has the echinacea, the purple cone flower. This does very well here in Texas. And this is a wonderful herb. You know, echinacea is very helpful for boosting the immune system, especially during cold and flu season. And you can make tinctures with the whole thing, the root, the stem, the flower. As you can see, this is really, this farmer's seed vault is really quite the collection. Now, I just want to mention that I have a vegetable garden planting guide, and I downloaded this from my extension service from Texas A&M University. So be sure to go online and check with one of the big universities in your state 
and they should have something very similar so you'll know what you can plant and when in the area where you live. Well, I don't think you can go wrong with any of these three collections. I really do think they're the three best garden seed collections out there right now, and they're a good price, and they come with a discount coupon code. So this is the time to stock up now and get, and get these into your prepper pantry or start using them for your fall garden. Now, if you'd like to learn more about my kitchen garden, be sure to click on this video over here where I share all about the things that I grow and give you a tour as well. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country Garden. Love and God bless.